It missed 2021 because of the pandemic, but it's back again in 2023. And it's so nice to see all the planes back here in Melbourne again. I just wanted to take a look around you. Yes. Very nice jet. Trust. George. George, oh, nice to meet you, George. You're going to buy one? One day. One day. Sorry, <laughs> Profit. Profit. Hunter. I don't know. Why is it? Why is it called Profit Hunter? What's the Profit Hunter? What does um, that mean? Because um, yes. So Profit Hunter is just the name of the plane, just yeah. what it was called. Um, yeah. Thank you for letting me have a look around your plane. Thank you. Fun story about this helicopter here, this is the Apache AH-64 gunship helicopter. Now when I was a kid, when I was about probably 9 or 10 years old, I was getting into computer games a lot and my dad bought me a game called Gunship. And in Gunship your job was to pilot one of these helicopters and execute a variety of missions. Now that was also the same age that we started going to the air shows in the UK, like Big in the Hill, we went to pretty much every year. But I think flying that game and flying one of these helicopters on a computer really had a big part in getting to me where I am in terms of becoming a pilot. So even though it's a helicopter, this is still quite a special one to me. Underneath the KC-10, this is one of the US Air Force's refueling aircraft. Apparently it's the last time that we're going to see this here in Australia, so I wanted to come down and take a quick look. If ever you've wondered how they do the air-to-air -air refueling, this is the boom on the back that basically connects to the other jets that come behind it. It's got little ailerons as well, so it can be moved up and down based on the airflow. And this thing, 160,000 kilograms of fuel this carries. I know that because I just read that on the site. One issue I have as a pilot flying internationally is sometimes it's hard to get hold of fuel. Uh, the Avgas fuel that Echo Yankee Zulu, the Cirrus SR22 uses, this one has solved the problem by converting itself to run on mustard seed based fuel. This is Wednesday as I record this. This is one of the trade show days they have at Avalon. It starts on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and half of Friday. Those are all trade days. Now, if you are watching this and you are a student pilot or you're interested in aviation and you've got a flight school near you and you want to come down to Avalon in the future, a bit of a tip is see if through your flight school or through someone at the airport, if you can get a trade day ticket because you basically get the whole air show, as you can see around here, with all the static displays, not about to get run over, sometimes not the flying displays that you have at the weekend, but there's still flying action going on. But it's far, far quieter. So if you're able to get a trade day ticket, try and do that. But then on Friday at the second half of the day, that's when Avalon opens up to the general public. And Friday afternoon, there's a big air display, night show on Friday evening, and then Saturday, Sunday, those are the two big days of flying where I think it goes pretty much from about midday through to about six o'clock at night. Constant air displays, it's really, really good. Sadly, this year, and to answer a lot of your questions of people who've been asking me online, 
am I coming to the air show? Well, yes, I'm here, but only today. I'm only here today. I'm not actually here this weekend, unfortunately. Uh, just got other commitments. I just can't come down this weekend. So I'm trying to make the most of it and pack as much as I can into this one day that I have here today. It doesn't matter what aircraft you sit in, if you're six foot, six foot two. Cirrus have never paid me a penny. I don't have any official arrangements with them. Yes, I am a Cirrus owner, but what I say now is completely my opinion and my opinion alone. I find it really annoying how much I like the Vision Jet. Yes, like any aircraft, you want it to be a bit higher, you want it to be a bit faster, you want it to go further, but it's just so, so well designed. And the familiarity as an SR22 pilot sitting in the cockpit here of the Vision Jet, it just feels like I could literally jump in here and fly, which I can't because this is actually a mock-up. This is not a, a real aircraft. This is a demo aircraft that they have here at the air shows. Buttons and everything work, but it's, it doesn't fly. The engine on top is, I think it's made out of cardboard. Two million dollars, just shy of. I think it's 1.96 million dollars. That's what it would cost to buy one of these Cirrus Vision Jets. There is a wait list for them. The wait time at the moment, if you order now, is you can get your Vision Jet by 2027. So they're very popular. There's a bit of a wait list, but but if you are one of the people on that wait list, congratulations. It's a lovely aircraft. Can I come for a flight with you? That would be great. Thank you. My details are below. This is one of the new Sirius SR22 Turbo G6s that they have here at the air show. One interesting thing about this airplane, it's got nothing to do with Sirius. This is one of the first that I've seen here in Australia, which has got the number and letter combination in its registration. A little while ago, there was an announcement from CASA that aircraft registrations are not just going to be three letters anymore, like Echo Yankee Zulu, but they're going to be a combination of letters and numbers like you guys have in the US. So eight, what is it, eight Alpha Tango, that's one of the first that I've actually seen in the wild. And uh, hopefully very soon. Hi. Hello. I'm good. I didn't... How are you? I'm good. Hey Errol. So if I was to fly around the world in an aircraft that's not a Cirrus, what would you recommend? Well, of course, it has to be a sling, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think about it, you know, the boys from the factory has done how many trips around the world? Yeah, I yeah, don't even know. Have, how many, yeah. you know, and they've done all those, you know, big tanks, they've done all the modifications. Yeah. So in experience, I think sling is probably one of the best ones that if you want to do a around the world trip, it has to be a sling, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is that the bush cat that I flew last time? Yeah, that's is the, that the bush one? cat. Look at it over there. It's so small. Look it at it. a couple of hours to get. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it is. What does that cruise at? Well, about 85 knots. Oh, so, so, but yes, I'll change. Yeah, that's, that's what I land at. <laughs> Anyone remember when I flew this up on the Gold Coast? This is the same bush cat that we took when we flew down Surfers Paradise down the coast, ground again. It's like seeing an old friend. Oh, nice to see you, though. Good man. Good to see you again, mate. Thank you. <laughs> As well as the military at Avalon, they're fairly well represented in the general aviation category as well. A lot of the brands that you'll know are down here. Cirrus are here, Diamond, Technam. I've seen a lot of my friends who, some of them run companies that actually sell aircraft, make aircraft. Sling are here, for example. I know my friend Errol's here. But it's basically military, bit of general aviation. There's not a lot. In fact, this year, there's no commercial aircraft down here. So if you're expecting to see like the large Qantas 737s, if you want to see an A380, which they did have down here at Avalon one year. From what I've seen, and it might be different later on in the week, but right now, today on Wednesday, there's no commercial aviation represented here at Avalon. But this is the general aviation area. Some of you learning to fly at the moment might recognise these ones. Hey, oh, thank you. What's your name? Hayden. Hayden. Nice, nice to meet you, Hayden. Thank you very much. Oh, no. No, don't pick up. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. We're back tomorrow. Are you here tomorrow? I'm only here today. Oh. 
So I really wanted to show you the interior of the Phenom 300E. They've got two at the show. They've got the Phenom 300 and the 100 variant behind me. I uh, spoke to the guys, they said, come back. I came back, they, they, they had to go, they finished. Because it's a trade day, they leave at a certain time and the aircraft is locked up. So I'm unable to show you what it's like inside this $12 million private jet. Uh, in lieu of that though, here are some stats. Because you know, everyone wants stats. It's got a range of 2,000 nautical miles. It cruises at 464 knots. It costs 12 million dollars. It's not the same as going inside, is it? That's not the end of my aviation day. I'm actually flying up to Sydney now for something very exciting, which I am going to share with you on the channel. One last thing, if I met you at Avalon, if you came up and said hello, I spoke to so many people today, thank you. It's so nice to meet you all. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love this community. I'm so glad you're a part of it.